This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 7, begin at verse 1, and it reads, Moreover, the word of the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahushai came unto me, saying, Also thou son of man, thus saith the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, Power unto the land of Israel, a end, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Verse 3, Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. Verse 4, And mine eye shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abominations shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Verse 5, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, power, and evil and only evil behold is come the end is come the end is come it watcheth for thee behold it is come i want to start off by giving all praise all honor and all glory to call Allah yamah yahawah ba'ashim yahushai ba'ashim rachakadosh b'katham i want to say double honors to my apostles the elders of the great millstone who teach and do rule well i want to say peace and salutations to the akim across the four corners of the earth pushing the truth with faith and with sincerity as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever, say shalom to the Akim and the Akwath of their listening and learning or willingly just as edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations appearing like the other nations with subscribing to this truth. To you, I say shalom. It's your brother, Yahweh, so part of the GMS Cleveland Church, a fellow servant, coming at you with another lesson through the Spirit and through the power of Yahweh, Shem Yahshah. This lesson is in regards to an article I came across on my Newsbreak app, and it's just going into the times where in not even coming into we're in you know um brothers bring out the fact that you got to understand we were in the last days two thousand years ago when yahweh shy basically was crucified and then his spirit went up to the heavenly father to sit at his right side so you know we understand that the prophecy says that yahweh shy is waiting for our father, Abinawa Yahweh, to send him back to bring judgment to this planet. You know, first and foremost to our enemies, which the nations are our enemies. But, you know, we have, you know, we have a, a enemy, you know, scriptures tell you, um, never trust thine enemy, you know, and who is the, our, our, our main enemy? This red Hebrew Edomite, who you ignorantly call the so-called white man. So in Ezekiel chapter 7, which is a great chapter, it goes into um, evil becoming. You know, um, when you go into that word evil, it's a compound word. Eve meaning time, ill meaning bad. So bad times is coming. And, you know, when you go into the end, you know, because, you know, it's different words for the word world. But, um you know, I think it's eon that means a rulership, you know. Um, basically, you're coming to the end of this so-called white man's rulership. That's why you're seeing all these different things taking place on the earth. You're seeing, um, like right now, it's not really being spoken about, but literally America is pretty much in World War Three. I remember coming across an article where they said how certain um, military bases had been attacked by drones. And then recently America sent a, its largest warship and destroyed something, in, I believe, in Iran or somewhere in the Middle East. Um, so pretty much, you know, when they sent that warship out there, that was the declaration of you know, World War Three. Now, it ain't got super hot and heavy where they got a draft and all these different things, but, you know, this is what the beginning of what we've been waiting for, because we know all these things must come to pass in order for our big brother, our, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, to come back. So I'm going to bring a little article out because uh, it talks about a multitude of things going on in the end of days. You know, and one of those things that's going to make the times evil or bad times is going to be a lack of you know you go into the book of um saint and timothy chapter three you go into that word um perilous 
it goes into violent, well, it goes into the dangerous or um, fierce, but it also goes into hard to do or hard to bear. So it's going to be hard to live at that time because it's going to be a lack of jobs, a lack of food. You know, scriptures talk about how the most high, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to get it. I said, book of Ezekiel chapter 14. And I'm going to start at verse. Hold on, I don't want to read all of it. I'm going to start at verse 13, but the point is verse like 21. And it reads, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of bread thereof and will send famine upon it and will cut off man and beast from it. So because of who these devils, well, because these devils are in rulership, because that's who has control of the land. The book of Job tells you the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. You know, uh, that's why these devils pretty much have all these embassies in all these different countries, you know, pretty much their policies is pushed. And if you're not agreeing, they can sanction you and whatnot. But the difference between now and then in the past is now you have countries really not adhering or giving a fuck. You know, um, you know, it's a major move going to take place next year. And that's when we're going to see all this drama. You know, of course, we filter everything through the scriptures. But, you know, I was just looking at, you know, it's a left hand side to numerology and it's a right hand side to it and, you know this year you know when you add that up it's a seven and next year is an eight so i could see a lot of things being implemented and taking place next year because you have so many things ending this year you know you got all these jobs closing and that's what the regards this video is on you know the jobs are closing down you know the um scriptures talk about the grinder cesa it says um Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls. Their righteousness saith the Lord, Yahweh, by Shem Yosha. So like it. But their own souls. It says, though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness saith the Lord, Yahweh, by Shem Yosha. So th th this is the most high bringing judgment. You know what I mean? And only if you had that mark of exemption when it goes into Ezekiel chapter 9, that Thuah. If I cause noisome beast to pass through the land and they spoil it so that is so that it be desolate, that no man may pass through because of these because of the beast. And that's the spirit because we was bringing this out at camp about how the Lord is going to have different ways. He's going to judge, you know, he's going into how Ohio has a multitude of different wildlife animals. You know, Ohio is one state that has bears, that has um, coyotes and wolves and, you know. And Ohio has mountains, so, you know, who's to say, you know, California has mountain lions. You'd be surprised, you know, because like I said, again, I remember the brother, the elder brothers going into how you had the mountain lion basically um, forming packs. And usually a mountain lion is a solitary animal. So scriptures talk about the most, we're doing a new thing on the earth, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, Lord, you know, Psalms 119 and 126, Lord is beginning to work, you know. Verse 16, though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahshua, power, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. Verse 17, or if I bring a sword upon that land and say sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it. And the scriptures tell you who is the sword. You know, Romans 13, this, um, what's that, Ezekiel chapter 21, um, you know, uh, uh, I think Psalm 17. Um, it says, verse 19, O Salakia, though these three men were in it as I live, said the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, well, Let me bring it back up because I don't remember. Verse 17, or if I bring a sword upon the land and say, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it as I live, saith the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahshua power, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Because it's by your um your your faith and your works, you know what I mean? You know. That's why um scripture talks about how uh basically how a man basically gonna pay for his own sins, you know, and you're gonna be delivered by based on your own faith and your own works. 
verse 19, or if I send a pestilence into the land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it as I live, saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bashmi, Al Shapira, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter, they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Verse 21, for thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bashmi, Al Shapira, how much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem and you got individuals talking about there won't be a day of Jacob's trouble but the scripture just said that he's going to send his four sore judgments upon Jerusalem which is a people before it's a place the sore and the famine and the noisome beast and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast so the Lord is about to send judgments and judgments He's been, you know, we see the increase in uh, violence in the world. You know, that's the Lord preparing the earth for Jacob's trouble, you know, because it'll be like no time before um, when the amount of violence is going to be on the earth, you know, and, you know, it's going to be a lack of food. It's going to be um, very dangerous. It's going to be um, lack of food again, lack of work. It's going to be it's going to be fucked up, you know, and, and rightfully so, you know. Because of the wickedness of these people in this place. You know. I, um, Ezekiel 7 says um, they shall seek peace and only destruction shall come. Which is uh, reiterated in 1 Thessalonians. So this is the book of Isaiah chapter 19. I'm going to start at verse 14. Point is verse 15. And it reads, The Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shall have mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. And they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. Because this place doesn't bear the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahusha. The only semblance of Yahweh Bashem Yahusha is when the brothers are out here on the highways and hedges. They have vibration, a righteous vibration. Well, let me take that back. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, all things are of Yahweh Bashem Yahusha. So lock you for that. You know, when you go into the book of um, Sirach, believe it. It, or it might be Wisdom of Solomon. I think it's like Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 where it talks about how he's in all things. So the righteous and the wicked, you know, the most high controls all of it, ultimately. So I'm going to rephrase what I said because basically it's the left-hand side of Yahweh Bashem Yahshua because he is a dual-natured power, you know what I mean? And that's truly powerful, you know, when they try to give or put the Most High God in a category of he's all love, he's all peace, he's all, you know, that's not true. You know, at the end of the day, you know, when you really, and that show you how people really don't read the scriptures, because when you really get into the scriptures, you really have a newfound respect for the scriptures, you know what I mean? You know, and it show you how much powerful witchcraft is on this place. You know, I remember growing up when my mom used to take me to church, you know, because I, I don't recall going to a, a mosque. You know, I, I grew up in a household where it was already, you know, scriptures say, can two walk together, at least they be agreed. So you had one person believe in one thing and another person believe in another thing and wondering why they, it didn't work out. But anyhow, I remember where I would go and one of my favorite accounts was Samson. So if the Most High God was all peace and all love, why would he have Samson basically take out the enemies of Israel like that? <laughs> Just don't be making no sense or adding up, you know. So, you know, the righteous vibration of Yahweh Bashem Yahusha is not being pushed on the planet right now. The only people that's pushing it, that's what I meant to say. No, um, for the, so, Thuwada Yahweh Bashem Yahusha for the correction, because I caught it. Um, the only ones that's pushing it is our elders, you know, the elder apostles of Great Millstone, first and foremost, and then, you know, you know, bishops and deacons on down, you know. But it's only the men with this doctrine that's pushing a righteous vibration because it's righteousness in order for you not to have a man with a man or a woman with a woman. You know what I mean? It's righteousness, you know, to to fast. You know what I mean? You don't have to be a glutton. You know what I mean? When you go into all the attributes and the, 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 the good, positive things that come from fasting, you would think they will push that, but they don't push that. They'll push eating any old thing and just do as thou wilt. Salakia, verse 15, neither shall there be any work for Egypt which the head or tail branch or rush may do. Verse 16, and that day shall Egypt be like unto women and it shall be afraid and 
fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh hosts, which he shake up over it. And we seeing that now, like these people are nervous, you know what I mean? And that's why right now you need to stay prayed up in the spirit, you know, uh, brother, I'm not going to go into it, but brother was just talking about something specifically that just happened to him recently. So, you know, even men of the Lord, because I believe all the men I'm around are men of the Lord. You, you know, you won't know they weren't until they're no longer around or no longer doing the work. You can't even say around because a man might be removed to go do the work somewhere else, which you've had men do that. What I'm going to say is this, though, you know, we are not above being uh, chastised or, or 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 going through things. You know, you got to take time to think about it. We're going to be suffering these things as, as well when these things take place. So who really needs salvation more than us? Because <laughs> we in a world that we can't stand anyway, you know, they have to have to suffer what these wicked ass people suffering. But the difference between us and them is that we have faith that Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, if we are of that hopeful number of the hopeful elect, we're going to be preserved and, you know, delivered from it. You know, scriptures talk about, and we and we 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 pray for it nonetheless, though, because we don't know if we're the elect or not. But the scriptures talk about in the book of Isaiah about we 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 basically await on your judgments, roughly paraphrased. This place needed, though, like I said, like I said, because when you really look at it with a spiritual eye, this place ain't gonna do nothing but get worse and worse and worse. You know, I was watching, um, you know, I'm going through some shit myself, and recently I had a little bit more free time. And, uh. I looked at, you know, I, I just was looking at some of the TV programming, like these shows, like they threw on this show and it's like show so fucking demonized. And then you look at it, how like they try to make something scripturally based, but then how they add their own, you know, own insight or their own creative license into it. You know, it, like it's just, it's, it's bugged out for real. So, um, with that being said, this is all prophetic because the scripture says it's going to be no work. This is um, <laughs> right before Christmas, too. 14,000 employees, tech company Nokia announces this major layoff. This is two hours ago. It says Nokia's, maze, so like it, Nokia's mass layoff, what it means for the tech industry and you. In a shocking development that has sent ripples across the global tech industry, Finnish... Finnish multinational corporation Nokia has announced a layoff of 14,000 employees. This news comes as a jolt, not just to the employees affected by Salakia. This, this news comes as a jolt, not just to the employees affected, but also to the industry at large, which is grappling with the repercussions of this decision. The layoffs were confirmed by Nokia's CEO, Pekka Ludmark, in an official statement released on the company's website. We have made this difficult decision to ensure the long-term stability, so like it's sustainability of Nokia, he said. The layoffs are part of Nokia's restructuring plan. And that's everybody's excuse. All these major companies talking about restructuring. Why do you think they keep using that wording? Because they're restructuring to fit the system they're creating. You know, they're creating a system where, you know, like they said, Amazon got 750,000 fucking robots. And Amazon is the largest employer of anybody in the world. So if they ready to go ahead, and, you know, they, these people ain't going to see. They're, 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 they're restructuring everything because it's about to be, you know, just like with these banks. These banks, I said, they basically closing. Well, I ain't, I'm going to rephrase. Uh, some of these banks didn't say that they're closing or shutting the doors. They're basically closing the brick and mortar board. And they and, and then, like, I just saw an article where Biden said he wants more people to live in old office spaces because a lot of companies allow individuals to work from home. You know, so now they no longer have those office spaces. From what I'm hearing, they're going to allow, like, the government is going to buy those office buildings and convert them to housing. Because it's about to be a lot of people without homes because they ain't going to be working. They're they going to have to you do a UBI. So this shit coming. They ain't going to need you to work. You know, I was listening to the guy John Williams. He was talking about, I think, in Texas, they got a fully automated restaurant. And then he was talking about, it like, in, in California where you got... Um, like people that work at like McDonald's and like fast food restaurants that they're basically demanding that Governor Newton demanding they get twenty one dollars an hour. So what's gonna happen? You know they got the technology that they don't really necessarily need you. So 
to flip a motherfucking burger. You got to take time to think about it. They don't even want you eating meat. <laughs> so that's about to be all the other way anyway, you know. A few people want it today. And, you know, when you go to Agenda, agenda 2030 and all that, and Agenda 2050 and all that, they literally talking about how they only want you consuming this amount of meat and they don't only want you having this amount of clothes. Like, these motherfuckers lost their motherfucking mind. You know what I'm saying? And then you got people trying to hold on to this shit. You know what I mean? Like, we have made this difficult decision to ensure the long-term sustainability of Nokia. He said the layoffs are part of Nokia's restructuring plan aimed at cutting costs and becoming more competitive in the market. As one of the leading players in the tech industry, Nokia's decision to let go such a significant number of his workforce will undoubtedly have far-reaching effects. The question is, how does this impact the industry and, more importantly, you? So if you want to read this, because I'm not going to read all of this, um, you know, if you want to read it, feel, 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 um, feel free to, you know, what I'm sure it's going to affect, you know, because Nokia isn't a, a small name company. You know what I mean? But again, scriptures tell you it's going to be a uh, grind of shell seats. You know, this is the book of um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And, this is book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse one. Remember now that creators in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not. I was just bringing up evil days when I first started this off. You know. <laughs> now we in the evil days. But you got people trying to run back to the most high now. The most high don't want you at the last end. You know. But he also has it set up for some men to wake up at the last end. And women. It says. Nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say I have no pleasure in them. Verse 2. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened. Nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house, who are the keepers of the house? These economists, you know, those that's watching, this, you know, the financial forecast or watching the life's lifeblood because a country's lifeblood is its, 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 its economy, its money, you know. In the day when the, you know, economy of motion, you know, a, a country can't move without an economy, without a money flow. In the days when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grinders cease, which is the jobs, because they are few and those that look out of the windows be darkened. You know, they're looking out the window, these economists, and seeing that it ain't no future. Like, I'm, I'm talking about every week I'm seeing some company laying off. This is probably the biggest of 14,000 from one company. Verse 4, and the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the doors of music shall be brought low. We constantly go into, we living in a time when the music is like some of the most grotesque garbage shit ever. You know what I mean? So, you know, if you have a spiritual eye of the most high something, which you can see something ain't right or something going on. You even got two third people that don't believe or um, you really can't get the scriptures, but get that something about to happen or can see something going on in society. So if you can see all this, you know, what, what spirit should you be at? What, what what time is it? You know what I mean? This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 21 and verse 10. And I'm going to read. I'm going to read it. Verse 9. Ezekiel, 20, Ezekiel chapter 21 verse 9. Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahshai, say, A sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished because this red hebrew edomite is basically a waiting to fuck you jakes up again time of jacob's trouble when you go into um i know the brother had put it in the, the um our group chapter hit this on to it about that killology you got this one um edomite i don't know what he was but he basically deals with the different police departments and he's he basically talking about how they gonna have to fuck jake up you know they I mean? that's in a spirit because they in the proper spirit they know that you are their enemy just like you know they I mean? a lot of jake are blinded to who theirs is though you know I mean? verse 10 it is sharper to make a sore slaughter it is furbished that it may glitter should we then make mirth it could temper the rod of my son as every tree so the point is being a you know a sword is furbished for this great destruction, should you be in a mirthful spirit? When you go in the book of Isaiah, chapter 24, it talk about the mirth of the land being gone. And although the mirth of the land is gone, for the most part, you still got a nigga trying to be in the mindset of kicking in and having fun. You know, 
you know, and the brothers, I mean, you know, folly is anything outside of the scriptures or worshiping or rever reverencing Yahweh Bashem Yahshua. But you got brothers that spend a lot of time, you know, doing folly. You know what I mean? You, know, you amongst the world, like I said, <laughs> you know what I mean? And again, like I say, scriptures talk about just not another man serving, but at the same time, you know, you do supposed to call certain things out. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, we getting closer and closer. You're not supposed to be in the house of mirth. You, the scriptures even said that. We'd rather be in the house of mourning. Because you sitting up here playing around and joking and having fucking fun. You know what I mean? You ain't in the proper spirit. But again, like I say, the most high, you know, doing a lot right now. So like I say, I just pray that the Lord keep all his, you know, faithful and hopeful elect. So again, back in the book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 11, and that knowing the time that now is slack you Romans, chapter 13, and verse 11, and that knowing the time that now it is now it is high time to wake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than we believe. So, you know what I mean? Again, if you see what's all going on right now is the time to be in a, a, a sober spirit, you know really trying to get the understanding of what's going on. And if you're a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, similar Indian, West Indian or Haitian, repenting and coming back to your power, whose true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. Because that's the only thing that's going to be able to protect you what's coming. You know I mean, like I said, again, we going to be over th this place, this place, North America, this place called the United States, Babylon the Great, is going to be utterly destroyed by ICBMs. You know, even if I had the money, I don't think I could go because I'm a felon. But then I don't know if you can get a passport as long as you ain't got the felony then. I, you know, who's to say? I, I've heard two different things. At the end, they, I couldn't afford it. I ain't even th attempting to think about You know what I mean? It just is no getting around this. You know what I mean? Like like a brother said, you could, the Lord can give you the means to get away from here and die somewhere else. You know what I mean? I'm going to reread this Romans chapter 13, verse 11 in the NLT. And it reads, this is all the more urgent for you know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up for our salvation is nearer now than we, it's like it, the, for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. So, I mean, like I said, again, I started the scripture, I mean, started the video off with, um, you know, evil and behold, only evil is coming, and then it said the end is coming. So we at the end, <laughs> you know what I mean? And as much as these people don't want to hear it or believe it, it don't matter. Romans three or three. So what if some did not believe? Does it make it to none effect? If you so-called a black, Hispanic, Native American, similar Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to the law, statutes, commandments, your power, with true name in the Hebrews, Yahweh Bashem Yahshua, where you will be destroyed. And with that, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to God. Allah Yimla Yahweh Bashem Yahshua Bashem. Rachakar Sufta. To my honors to my apostles, the elders of the great millstone, teach and do real well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing the truth with faith and with sincerity. And we're seeing the lives and freedom to do so now more so than ever. Shalom to the Akim and the Aqua. I thought they're listening and learning. Lord willingly, this is edifying. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of other nations appearing like the other nations subscribing to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. Till next time, Shalom, Shalom. Mawath, love a boy, Shalom.